So uh, there are things here, but this is the first big. Why did you look at me then? <laughs> Does he want a cup of tea? Thrown at me? He, went, he went silver bride <laughs> and looked straight at me then, straight in the eyes. <laughs> it's only because he's tired of looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a nice idea that silver pride because the el older gay community who are the people who went first Precisely. and actually built. How can we put it? They built a, a, a platform for gay people to, I mean, I was part of it. I mean, it, it, you know, I wrote about it in my book. It was a scary time. Uh, the play Canary, um, James, who wrote it, um, used me as one of the characters uh, in, in the play. It was a scary time. I'll ask each one of you, and I'll start with, with Alan, and, and we've got lots of time so you can get plenty of time to get in what you want. Alan, do you think the city is uh, homophobic? Truthfully, it, it, um, it's uh, by and large. I would say that the vast majority of people are not homophobic. However, there is a strong element that is homophobic, and maybe not even overtly homophobic, but people who've never really been exposed to gay people. Some of the people have never met gay people, and so have these Victorian stereotypes that that are battered around and. Um, Obviously, there have been some very high-profile homophobic incidences over the last few years, but by and large, I, it, I don't know. It's a two sides of coin. I don't think it is in my everyday life. Has it touched your life? Um, there's always a comment. Every day, there's a comment. Yeah, and so I'm, every day, there's a comment. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not particularly. No, no, I'm no. Not but a feminist yeah, at all, yeah, but, but, but always... yeah, but yeah, but to get to that stage and not mm. being offended, you've gone through a lot of pain oh, yeah. to get there. Yeah, uh, everyone forgets with all these comments the pain that we go through to get to that stage. Yeah. You know, and I say to young people, so many, many young people listen to this program who will be listening now with hope. Mm -hmm. who are gay. I mean, there's a young man, he's now at university, I'm thrilled to say he's come out, he's in Leeds, uh, he's a beautiful young man who I, he used to email me, I had to be careful because he was underage, but I gave him advice yeah. and then he did listen to me and he went to his mum and it happened and he came out and now he's, he's having a nice life. Uh, and we had to do it very carefully because there's a lot of people out there and then of course you, you know my phone is famous for homophobic yeah. remarks. I mean, I've, I've taken three people to court now, no oh, sorry, two people to court because of it. Um, so, um, Joan, has it touched your life? Homophobia? Yeah, I, I suppose it has. I, it's a little bit different when you're a woman because you also sort of have to get on with misogyny as well and sometimes that's very difficult to see where one fades into the other. But I didn't come out till I was 25 um, and I'm so... The, the difference in my life after I came out was absolutely extraordinary and I think I, you know, I hope that Liverpool Pride can make sure that people don't wait till they're 25 or 30 to come out. I hope that Liverpool Pride means that fantastic young lesbian, gay, bi and trans people in Liverpool can be out and about. Now there is homophobia and I think that's true of any society anywhere in the UK and I don't think we should think of Liverpool as an, a, a special case because of that. Very proud to be a local, you know, I'm very, very proud of my city. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can not deal with the homophobia that there is. And that's what Liverpool Pride is about. It's about saying, enough is enough. There's a fantastic community here. Come and celebrate with us rather than not know who we are. James? Um, Do you think the city's homophobic? I think there are some people here who are homophobic. I don't necessarily think Liverpool is more or less homophobic than other big mm -hmm. cities. Um, I mean, Liverpool Prime is going to happen on the 7th of August. That's pretty much within a couple of days, about 10 years since I told my parents that I was gay. And in that time, you know, I've, I've had names called and occasionally I've felt maybe physically intimidated in certain situations. But, I mean, I, I've lived in Anfield for the last seven years and, I mean, that's, you know, maybe you know, one of the most kind of environments that people might think are quite homophobic in the city and I've had very, you know, my, my neighbours all know that I'm gay and they, I live with my partner and I've, I've experienced very little difficulties where I live so I, th I think there are elements of homophobia and I think there's a lot we need to do in schools particularly but I don't think it's any more homophobic than, than just generally in, in other cities. Do you not think, I'll open, throw this open to all of you, do you not think that one of the arguments against having uh, a gay pride is that me as a gay man over the years have fought to be accepted. Now are we, and it's an old cliche by saying this, but are we now ghettoising ourselves and saying, well that's our little area. 
I really hate that ghetto. Right. I don't understand where that idea comes from. Because Liverpool Pride, or Pride in, in whatever city, is about celebrating a community's achievements. So it's not about ghetto. It's, it's about... It, it's, it, it, for our festival particularly, we are trying to be as inclusive as possible. It's about saying come and have a great time yeah. and I think that's the same as any festival that happens across the city so you might look at Chinese New Year or Africa Oh Yay or you know uh, the, the local the, the recent Polish cultural festival that's happened for the first time in the city they're not about ghettoizing African people or Chinese people or Polish people it's about celebrating a culture and that's exactly what Liverpool Pride is about I would say that because Liverpool has been such an important port for so many hundred years, the fact is that there has been a gay community here for at least as long as there's been, a, there's been major seafaring going in and out. And I think if you're going to understand Liverpool as a city, you have to understand its African connections, its, its Chinese connections, and you have to understand and accept that the gay community has always been here and in, in its own way has driven the city in its development. And for me, I think Pride is quite important because it's just, it's not about we're, you know, we're gay, we're bi, look, it, it's about, we've always been here, let's get on with it, let's all of us, gay, straight, anything, get on with it and get on together and understand and accept, and that's it. I think, I think the inclusive point's really important, you know, no one's going to be standing on street corners going, you can't come past if you're not gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender, you know, this really is something to bring your friends along, you know, all your friends along to, your family along to, or in fact anyone who doesn't necessarily know gay people who just wants to come along and, you know, listen to some really fab music, have mm -hmm. a really great day out. So what you're all saying is <clears throat> that it's nothing to do with being gay, it's a festival to show people like the Jamaican uh, B Buha, uh, the, all, all the different yeah. festivals. So you're just saying, we, we want a festival, we want to be part of this country that has a festival like others. Or, I mean, what's the logic behind I having it? I think it's a festival that really focuses on what um, a lot of gay people are, you know, kind of into and enjoy. So the music we've got, it's on the main stage, you know, there's a lot of, you know, say disco divas, kind of, you know, club divas going to be on the stage there. And, you know, we, we're going to have like a cabaret thing. So Fancy calling Adam, Adam yeah. Rickett a <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's bought, bought on my heels. So. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, go on. <laughs> you know, we're also going to have like a cabaret stage with some, you know, fantastic acts and artists on there. So it's, it's not just a festival it's a festival that's built around um sort of around gay culture but it, it really is something for everyone to come along to and everyone to have a great time where's it going to be where's the main stage the main stage will be on dale street and there'll also be two other stages um in that area so there'll be a kind of party disco great I'm, I'm giving my age away even saying the word disco on it. <laughs> really, really great party stage. Then an acoustic music stage and a cabaret stage. So very diverse artists. And when we're talking about celebrating um, the, the LGBT community in Liverpool, you know, the amount of uh, artistic talent that's out there is extraordinary. I mean, it is across the city anyway, you know, we're, we're renowned for it. But there's some, you know, really great performers that are in that lineup. Um, the day is going to start with a march, so there is a, there is a kind of campaign element to the day, but we're going to end on a really high note, a really great street party. Are they closing the city down? Or oh, oh, parts of the city? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, um, Can we get some water, please? The uh, festival itself, I mean, we're looking at Dale Street. It's going to be running, uh, so Dale Street's going to be closed for about six in the morning until around ten o'clock at night. So it's a Saturday? It's going to be, it's, yeah. a, it's a one-day event on the Saturday, so we're going to be closed from around six in the morning. So if you've gone out for a night before, you're still going to be able to come out, get a cab home, no problem at all. And then, uh, and then again, so in the evening it'll reopen again. We're not going to close down the city centre. This isn't a Matthew Street. Um, and even during the march, there will be some road closures for the march, but they're going to be rolling as they go. So what, what we really don't want to do is we want to make it so people in the city want to join in, take part, but um, not bring it to a standstill. Uh, can I just... Do you want some water? Oh, no, I'm fine, oh, thanks. Go on. Um, just, I understand that there is, um, there is this concern that it's a prize, it's a march, it's... it's, it's some people say forcing it down your throat, being in people's faces. And I understand that... That's where the parade started from, you know, in the late 60s. It started off as a political statement when it was illegal to be gay, when there was massive, massive um, uh, discrimination in employment and all sorts. And now, to be honest with you, that's generally, it's, legally speaking, generally quite equal. 